So I'm going to show you how to take these five images and convert them to a high key black and white format. So you know the question, are you ready? It's Photoshop time and you know the drill. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack. Yes! That's awesome! What? So once all the images are selected, you can just right click, choose open with, and choose Photoshop. Once all the images are open in Photoshop, high key is very straightforward. Obviously, you're going to try to shoot things that are lighter in tone, like wider walls, uh, lighter clothing, lighter backgrounds. I want these to be in black and white. So I'll go ahead and add a black and white adjustment layer. And actually, that's going to give me some luminance control over the colors in the scene, right? So if I turn off this eyeball, I've got blue. And then it looks like the white is all contaminated with warm colors, like yellowy orange. So what I can do then is grab the warm colors and see Yep. So I can brighten those up a lot. I've got to be careful not to blow out the details in them. And then that blue, light blue wall is probably cyan. So I can brighten up that to make it more high key. And then I can add a levels adjustment layer. And remember the Munker White Illusion video from earlier. So this looks like it has pure black in these areas, but clearly it doesn't. Like it's missing a 25% of all the dark and has zero black tones in this image. And for high key, sometimes that's okay to skate away from the pure black as long as it doesn't look washed out. And here, this is giving me the illusion of pure black so it doesn't appear washed out. We'll see other images where that's not the case. But notice my histogram. I am running right up that right wall. So if I alt or option click on that white slider, it's going to convert and show me everything that's white means it's pure paper blown out highlight white. And that's never good. So the way you would fix that, and it will most likely happen with some of these high key conversions, compress everything to the top layer by hitting command option shift letter E, makes it its own image, go up to filter, down to camera raw filter. That has a great highlight recovery system there. And you can tell, like looking at the histogram at the top, if you toggle on this highlight clipping warning, which mine is already on because it has a little box around it, but you can also tell because of the red, if I click it off, the red goes away. The red is showing me the areas of the image that are literally blown out highlight detail, which means if I were to print this, it would show up as paper white and paper white is always bad forever and always. Online, it doesn't really make that much of a difference, but I will pull my highlight down, my highlight slider that'll recover all those lost highlights. Click OK. This image is done. Let's try the second image. So this is, again, a nice straightforward image. It was shot in a high key environment, right? Bright white light, bright white walls. Uh, so it's already going to be a very nice high key black and white conversion. So what I'll do is I'll add a I'll add a gradient map this, this time. It looks like my gradient map default is not set to the black and white, which I want. So I'll click on the actual gradient. And in the gradient editor that pops up, I'll toggle open the basics and choose the black to white and click OK. And that's going to give me a, a really nice conversion. I didn't have anything in here that I really wanted to manipulate based on its color channels. So that's totally fine. Here I just go up to levels and I'd say, well, let me open up the midtones a bit. See, I can open up those quite a bit and I'm still not clipping my highlights and it just makes it more and more high key. Got to be careful not to lose this line. To me, that's starting to disappear. So what I would have to do is adjust everything else to where I like it. Hit B for the brush and maybe hit 5 for 50% for my opacity up here. I'll look at my swatches. I'm Black is in my foreground, which is perfect because I'm painting over here on a white mask. And so what I would do is right bracket key to make my brush a little bigger. And I would just paint in the edge of that uh, tummy area, right bracket key bigger, because I'm, I'm basically just making sure this doesn't get lost. And maybe I want to make sure that doesn't get lost, just so there's some delineation of tone. One of the common mispractices with high key is you, you allow the tonalities to blow out your edges. So you don't see where the nose meets the cheek, you know, that kind of thing. All right, let's try another image. Tell you what, since we didn't manipulate any colors in the last one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this image. I do have a, a customized mask, but I'll fix that. So I'll hold down the command or control key and select my levels and my gradient map and just drag it over to the tab for the next image hover over it and let go. And all those adjustments are auto applied. And all I would do is I'd hit uh, shift delete and that's gonna open up the fill dialog box. You could also go up to edit and down to fill. And I'm just going to choose fill with white basically to remove all of the edits I did. So here's where we were and here's where we are. Now, if you say, well, actually I would want to maybe manipulate that red hair, it's no big deal. Just add a black and white adjustment layer, turn off your gradient map and pull up the red to make that, you know, a little more bright and high key. Now here is a, 
a prime image where the high key adjustments are now starting to make you lose the, uh, the feeling of a rich black somewhere in the image, right? So we can save that either by manipulating this with a, a mask, which we'll probably wind up doing. But first, let's see if we can just do it with the levels. If I can just pull this over just to bring some of that back. That may be enough. But if I want more, I will go to my levels adjustment mask. Make sure I hit B for the brush. Just eyeball and make sure black's in my foreground. I'm painting on a white mask. I'll look up at my opacity. It's 50%. That's fine. Left bracket key to make my brush smaller. And I'll just pull in with a few passes in areas that I think should be more dark. Give me that illusion of pure black. I'll hold down the command and space bar. Zoom into her face just a little bit. Hit zero for 100%. And I'll just make sure I've got black pupils. So I hit four for 40% and just bring in some dark tones, kind of where I think they should be, like around the eyelashes, the eyeliner, usually that line around the outside of the iris, sometimes right around the creases of the nose where you know it should be pure blacker. And so you don't want to ruin the D-max. You don't want to totally wash out where there would be pure black. Command or control zero to fit it back in screen. See, just that little bit really makes it look like a proper high key where it is high key, but there is the appearance of some appropriate black tones in the image. Now this would be a nice one to compress everything to the top layer. Hit command option shift letter E and pop over to the filter, camera raw filter. They give you a lot of control. So uh, currently I don't uh, have any uh, blown out highlights. Even if I drag this all the way over, that's when I start to get them. So this could, could still be a, a touch brighter. But what I wanted to try was adding a white vignette under the effects panel. So just pull this over because for this particular image, I think a white vignette really adds to that high key feeling, especially since the primary dark tones are here in the center of the image. So yeah, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. That's that high key conversion. Now let's go to this one. Tell you what, let's do it a different way. Hit Command or Control J, and let's immediately go over to the camera raw filter. Now remember, the very first item is always the last filter you used with all the adjustments that you made. So if I had made a black and white conversion that was fairly generic, and I wanted to reapply it, I would choose this. But if I want to go in and actually manipulate the filter, you need to go to where the filter resides to manipulate it. So I'm going to go all the way down here to camera raw filter, and I'm just going to do the conversion in here. At the very top, I'll choose a monochrome profile, and I'll choose the black and white mixer so that I have some control over the color channels. See the little red dots? That's where I'm losing stuff, and that's okay, because remember, we can always recover it with the highlight slider. So I like where that is. I'd like to make her brighter, and I want to make this overall brighter. So first, I'll get the adjustment brush, and I'll just toggle on a stop and a half almost of exposure, which is too much. It's going to totally blow out, but that's okay, because it's a slider. So I get to adjust that to my taste which I will. I'll just pull that exposure slider back down. But sometimes it's a lot easier just to see what you're doing. How far up can I pull that and then recover the highlights just because I want it to be a bit, bit you know, more high key. And then when I'm ready, I'll click this very top icon so I can go back to the basic and make sure I don't lose the highlights overall in the image. Pull the exposure up over the entire image. This Remember, this is a global adjustment. And again, I'd still have to come back and pull those highlights down. And maybe this would be an interesting one for a vignette that's white coming to the effects panel. No, I don't like how that's breaking this part down, but I'm not going to do that. I'll just pull this back down and I'll click OK. So I still have my rich blacks and it's has that nice high key feel. Now, while I'm back in Photoshop, I still have the freedom to add a levels adjustment and just double check. Yep, I'm not clipping anything. My histogram has not been clipped, right? But I can still pull this up just a tiny bit more if I would like to. Somewhere in that range, to make sure it's really dominant high key. As long as you haven't lost your pure black, this is a, a very simple way to go. All right, let's start with this image. So I'll add a gradient map. My gradient map is still defaulting over here. So I'll click it, toggle on the basics in the gradient editor, choose black and white, click OK. And then I'll add a levels adjustment layer. And I'll just pull up the midtones. And what I see is I like the background more here, but the, the subjects are a bit too blown out, right? So in order to get the two looks I want, which is something maybe around here for the couple, but as bright as this for the background, I'm on a mask, right? It's already pre-selected. I'll hit B for the brush, make sure it's selected, make sure black's in my foreground. And I'll look at my opacity up here. It's at 40%. So I'll take that, I'll hit eight for 80%. I'll right bracket key, hold it. So my brush will get bigger and I'll just paint them back in because essentially I want to just adjust them and then I'll hit zero for a hundred percent left bracket key and I'm just going to paint in right in there so I can add a another levels adjustment 
So here's an advanced technique. Probably already know that if, if I just drag this layer mask up to this level's adjustment, it's going to remove it from this layer and put it on this layer. If I hold down the Alt or Option key, it's going to ask me, do I want to replace it? And it's going to leave this one, but copy it over top of this one. But here's the advanced part. If you hold down the Shift key along with the Alt or Option key while you click and drag, let go, it's going to ask, do you want to replace the layer mask? But the great thing is, not only is it going to replace it, it's actually going to invert the mask so that now I'm working specifically and only on the people. If I click on that levels adjustment icon to bring up the histogram, see now I can just make them bright or dark. So now it gives me a lot more control over you know what, what it is I'm adjusting. Now let's say I wanted to go maybe this bright for their skin, but I still don't, I don't like that I'm losing the detail and the highlights here. Notice how my, my foreground color is going back to blue because of that gradient map. So I would just hit D, which brings back my default colors and I'll leave it on black and I'll paint with 100% just to see what I can see. I'll hit the B for the brush tool. And remember, the only way you can paint is you gotta be on the mask. So I'll go click the mask to select it. You see the four corners there. And I'll, I'll just make a pass and I'm at 100%. So just to bring some of that back. And again, this is one of those instances where this is going to be a total it's your taste kind of thing. I think for me, I'd compress everything to the top layer by hitting command shift letter E. I would then add a new levels adjustment layer, click the black point eyedropper and just click on the darker part of her hair or maybe her eyelashes that I want to be black. That's too black. Command and control Z. I'll click maybe that shadow here. OK, that's 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 more subtle, but I don't want it applied everywhere. Right. So what I would like to do is hide everything I just did by turning this mask black. Remember, black conceals, white reveals. So what I would do is I would just go up to image adjustments and down to invert or just hit command or control I. It's much quicker. And that's going to hide that resetting of the black point. I'll hold my command and space bar so that I can drag and zoom in. And what that's going to quickly do, hit B for the brush tool, it's going to give me the ability to paint back in the black where I want it. Left bracket key to make it smaller. I need to have white in my foreground, so I'll hit X to switch them. And I don't want this at 100%, so I hit 5 for 50%. That's still too hard. 2 for 20%. I just want to bring back a little bit of the appearance. I'm just clicking and dragging maybe over her eyebrows where it just seems a little washed out. Maybe I'll go 40% here, 30% here. I'm just trying to make sure that the rich shadows actually look like rich shadows where appropriate. Right bracket key and just pass over the hair uniformly. Get some of his hair back here. Make a smaller brush with the left bracket key just to get that smile line. Maybe right here in her nose. Man zero to fit in screen. So what that does is that it increased the contrast locally where we want the viewer to ultimately look, which is focused on the bride and the groom. And now you can do any other techniques you want. Like I would still compress this again to the top layer. And then I would look at it and, and ask myself, maybe I would want to dodge the face a little more. So I would choose the burn and dodge tool, choose dodge, but I would choose mid-tones, maybe four for 40%, right bracket key, and just do a couple of dodges on the face. See, that's the second click, third click. That's about as light as I can get. Maybe I need to lighten his hand now in proportion because his hand looks awfully dark comparatively. So I did two clicks on the hand. So you see how this is to taste. Let's see where we were. I'll turn down all the other eyeballs and I'll turn on this gradient map so it'd be black and white. So I'll turn this off where we ended it up. I mean, it's a beautiful image, but if you want it specifically to have the emotions and all the underlying symbolism that comes with, with high key imagery. This is a really interesting conversion. I hope that helps. I can't wait to see what you make. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa! Yes! <laughs> oh my god, I did! This is hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here. <laughs>